Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. And uh, we're going to finish off some of what we were doing yesterday. Uh, but before we do, can you join me in a word of prayer? The dear, gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning asking for your presence in our lives, in this study. Through thy spirit, you can speak to us, that you can bring conviction and power. And we know, Lord, that we live in a difficult time in this world's history. As you see society collapsing and heading towards civil war, um, as we see uh, the hatred that exists in so many hearts, but we also know, Lord, that your spirit is still striving with man, and that there are many souls who are seeking to understand the truth and to make correct decisions. And um, we wish that we could somehow help all of them. But Lord, you've given us individually a work to do uh, in our sphere of influence. And we just pray, Lord, that that sphere of influence can, can affect lives who then can affect others. Um, we ask for forgiveness for um, the things that we have done and said and the time that we have wasted and the injury that we have done personally to your work um, by our unchristlike characters. And um, we just pray that you can help us today as we seek you. Be with us in this study. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Okay, so just to kind of review a little bit of what we were doing yesterday. So we were addressing the seven kings, and we're saying that the seven kings are not the seven heads in any of the beasts. And as we had gone through Revelation 17, we could see that the explanation of the woman riding the scarlet-colored beast is done by reference to the beast of Revelation 13. So when it talks about the beast that thou saw, that was and is, uh, that was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, that that's not a reference to the scarlet colored beast because that can't be true of the scarlet colored beast. It can only be true of the beast of Revelation 13, which receives the deadly wound, and that deadly wound is in the uh, the fifth head, and the sixth head would be the United States which is the second beast of Revelation 13. And when we look at Revelation 17, then we can see that we have represented in the 10 horns, uh, the United Nations. We have represented in the seven kings, the presidents of the United States at the time when the, the second beast of Revelation um, 13, that is the false prophet, is going to speak like a dragon. And then we have the representation, of course, of the papacy in the beast that was is in not is not and is also the eighth, right? So the fact that uh, the eighth is not one of the kings, but it just follows the kings, right? So if we can look at it in the sense that there's a deadly wound that's received by the papacy in 1798, that the United States has these 70 years the days of one king it has horns like a lamb but it will speak as a dragon at the end and this occurs in the repeat of millerite history that begins in 1989 so the count for those kings would be 1989 and then we can use the parallel from uh, the seven kings of persia and we can line those up with these presidents Cyrus lining up with Bush first, Cambyses with Clinton, uh, False Murtis with Bush the second, Darius with Obama, Xerxes with Trump, as we had already done in Daniel 11, verse 2, and Artabanus, the placeholder, marked with Biden, also a placeholder. Now, Artaxerxes, of course, is the one who establishes the civil um, administration in Jerusalem by giving this decree to Ezra. So Ezra is going to administer that decree. But the decree of Artaxerxes is regarding the judges and the magistrates who are then going to set up this civil government to complete the specifications of the prophecy. 
that is the three decrees, Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes are all needed in originating, affirming, and um, completing the specifications of the prophecy, as Ellen White says. So, so we can see that in these seven kings of the United States, this isn't about release from captivity. These seven presidents are going to show a movement towards captivity, right? So this civil war president who would be the next president, whether it's Trump or someone else, no matter what happens, the United States is extremely divided. If Trump wins, there's going to be a very um, vitriolic ex response to Trump's victory. You never know what you could see. You might even see whoever becomes president being assassinated. It's always possible. Um, especially when you have like a civil war, you have people who may be there to protect a president who are on the side of those that are, you know, opposed to the president. So it, it makes the president open to, to those types of things. And I'm not saying the next president's going to be assassinated. But I'm saying those types of things can happen in a civil war. Um, but if, you know, so if it's Trump, it could be Trump that's assassinated or whatever. If Trump wins, there's going to be this very uh, negative response. If Trump doesn't win and it's seen that this was done through censorship, manipulation uh, of the election in some way, there are many American citizens who would see it their civil duty to begin the civil war, right? So, so the United States is a powder cake. I think everybody in the world would recognize that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is the situation that, um, that we are facing when we look at these kings, these presidents of the United States. It's not going to be as simple as we get a president who's going to be, you know, in favor of a Sunday law. And, and this isn't even about the Sunday law, because we know that it's under the eighth, not under the seventh, that the Sunday law occurs. Right. Because when the beast and the ten horns and the United States are united, that's when the Sunday law occurs. So, so the Civil War president, it's hard to say exactly how events are going to unfold. But that's where I would say that we are at, that, that we can just safely say that uh, the next president uh, marks um, this division in the United States, the end of civility. I don't know. Any thoughts on that, on that uh, quick review? Well, okay. So Angela says if our RFK is elected as an independent, I'm not, well, he's definitely not going to be elected as an independent. So, I mean, it's kind of a, a moot point. Um, he just doesn't have enough support. And, um, and he doesn't have support on very much on the left or on the right. So, um, so I don't think that's going to happen. It would it would affect uh, the outcome of the election, but I'm not sure if he's going to draw away more from the left or more from the right. Because there is a part of the left that is still like the left that used to exist. That is the left that's against Big Pharma. That, that left does still exist. Um, uh, and then, of course, you have a right, uh, the part of the right that would... Uh, like some of the things that he's saying. But um, I don't think it, it's, it, it really matters, you know, for like to predict who's going to be president, I don't think is really the issue here. Because we're not sure how things are going to unfold. But um, one of the things that when, when we start to look at 
um, current events and we start to, you know, fit our interpretation, change our interpretation of prophecy to fit current events. Um, that's a difficult thing, right? Um, because we see that happening all the time with Christians. I mean, if you go back, well, you can go back at least, I, I can go back to the 70s and how uh, Christians interpreted Bible prophecy to somehow reflect that what was happening today is marking like the Antichrist is going to be next or whatever. Um, so our safety is in following Miller's rules and not speculating on the things that have not yet occurred. You know, all we can say is that there are seven kings and we can line them up this way. And this is consistent with what this movement has understood. Now, does somebody have a comment or? No, okay. No one just joined. Oh, okay. So does anybody have a comment about this? I think we covered quite a bit of this, you know, with with what we were looking at yesterday. I mean, the the way in which this line to the lower right is is coming together, I think, is better than what we've seen before, because it fits more with the way that the the scriptures themselves were written. So when we're looking at this, placing Trump as the equivalence of Xerxes as the fifth in this line, mm -hmm. just it, it fits more logically. Now, we still have one point that we have to address. Right. And Point is five are fallen, one is. Okay. And one is yet to come. Now, the way that this has been done, so let's go to Revelation 17. Now, the way this has been done always has been in relation to the seven heads. But we've we've come to the conclusion that the seven kings are not the seven heads. And um now, we did address it, but I just want to make this really clear that that there is from Revelation 13, because that's what's being brought into this picture in um, when in verse seven, the angel said unto me, wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and the beast that carrieth her, which has seven heads and ten horns. So so that is going to be describing the scarlet colored beast. But not the scarlet colored beast by itself, or even the woman by herself, but this mixture of church and state, right? And so we see in this the the this Revelation 17 is addressing the end of the world, and we know that Revelation 13 is dealing with the period of the papacy itself, the 1260, and when it receives the deadly wound. And so we can look at Revelation 13. I just need to share this screen here. Um, and we can see that, that Revelation 13 is now being used to explain Re Revelation 17. Right? So it's going to say, the beast that thou sawest and, and is was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. So this beast has to be the beast of Revelation 13, the first beast what we would call the beast. It's always referred to the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. It's not the scarlet colored beast that could be described here. So we, we, I think, come to that conclusion that that is how this is being explained. That is, the woman on the beast has to be explained by referring back to the papacy. That we can see that the woman is the papacy and that she is riding the kings of, of the of the world. And if we're going to address the heads here, it explains what those are. Right? The seven heads are the seven mountains on which the woman sitteth, which is the city of Rome. To say that these seven heads now are the seven kingdoms of Bible prophecy or the seven forms of Roman government 
or seven popes. None of that would make sense in the context of this chapter. So, so these seven heads that are seven mountains just is referring to the city of Rome itself. So the woman is sitting in Rome. It's the papacy. Right. And then it says there are seven kings. Right. So those seven kings are referring to the beast of Revelation 13, the second beast. That is, we have in this time, we have uh, the beast that was and is not. So it is not during this 70 years, which are called the days of one king in Isaiah. But here it's going to be that there are seven kings. Now, when it says five are fallen and one is and another is not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. The question is, how can we get this that it's explained here to John? That it's somehow in our time, that is in the time of Biden, that that this explanation is given. Right. So this would be it's the main problem always in interpreting interpreting Revelation 17 is how can we know when is is. How can we know we're at this point of history in this explanation that we're not in the time of John when he's saying five are fallen and one is and that we're not in 1798 or even just in this broad period from 1798 until um uh, you know until the the sunday law right that we're actually in this time how can angel be giving him this explan this explanation that places it here now okay well with, with the way in which you're asking the question if we were considering this as well from the spirit of prophecy mm -hmm. looking directly at manuscript 32 of 1896 and specifically paragraph 36 okay doesn't that help us to identify the time in which this is actually giving and is having reference Okay, um, so that's going to be. Uh, let's see, I'm just going to get it here. So it's 1896. All right. Which one? 32. And go down to paragraph 36. Okay. Well, how do I do this? Um, it's not showing me my um, references. Okay, hang on. Um, yeah, so I, I can find the manuscript, but I can't. I'd have to count the paragraphs manually. Five and fifteen. Okay, so how does the paragraph begin? God has warned his people of the perils before them. Okay, so God has warned his people of the people, his people of the perils before them. John beholds the things which will be in the last days, and he sees a people working counter to God. Read Revelation 12, 17, 14, 10 to 12, and chapter 17 and 13. John sees the company who have been deceived. He says, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And there's the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So 
what is there that you see in that paragraph? Okay. When we're looking at this, as Sister White had written it, if we're comparing as you were just doing chapter 17 and 13, but also throwing into it chapter 12, 17, and then 14, 10 to 12. And then she's going to create that quote from uh, Revelation 16. Correct. Okay, now I, I see the comment from the chat. Yeah, I can share the screen. Okay. Okay, the, the point, when Sister White was looking at this, she is making it clear that this company has been deceived. And then she comes up with the quote from Revelation 16 about the unclean spirits like frogs. Mm -hmm. Now, hasn't it been fairly well established that these unclean spirits are representational of Fox, CNN, and the Eternal World Television Network? Well, in one way. I mean, obviously, this is the sixth plague, and the sixth plague occurs after the close of probation uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble. So okay, but it's, but, but yes, yeah, so definitely we, there is a representation of which we can see that this is the media. This is the information that Satan is using Protestant, Catholic, and um, um, I guess, um, you know, whatever you want to call it, secular, the dragon power or whatever. Okay. All of them. When, we're, when we're looking at this, the, the, next, the next sentence of the following paragraph, for those who have rejected the truth, the light of God has departed. Mm -hmm. If the truth found in Miller's rules is being set aside. Mm -hmm. Is there the light of God? No. They, they can't advance if they don't accept the light they're given. Right. But I still don't see how this helps us to show when is is. We've already got one example that has been addressed about these spirits like frogs. When mm -hmm. we're looking at this, just like if we looked at Revelation 12, 17, here we see the verse read, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. When was this initially being fulfilled? Well, I mean, it's October 22, 1844, that you have that message begin. Third angel's message. Okay. Now, Revelation 14, 10 to 12, as you're, as you're noting, mm -hmm. this is part of the message of the third angel. Because it's giving a warning about how that same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Right? Mm hmm So, as, as we consider this, from Revelation 14... 
we know that the message of the third angel is to go out. It is, I mean, it began to go out October 22nd, 1844, but it has not gone out because it has definitely arrived, but it has yet to be empowered. Okay. Still, I don't follow how this is helping us to show where is is. You need to be more direct. What I'm trying to say is that we've all, we have all of these pieces that are being put before us. Are we able to put the pieces together in proper order? Well, yeah, so we have all of these pieces, right? But in, in Revelation 17, it's going to say um, uh, there are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, right? And the other's not yet come. Now, we know that the ten horns which thou sawest in verse 12, it says, are ten kings which have received no kingdom as of yet, right? So we know it's prior to the Sunday law, right? in which he is observing um, this situation, right? But it has to be, if if we're saying that the, the fifth is Trump and the sixth is Biden, that means that this explanation must be coming from the time that we are in, right? And the question is, how can we place it specifically here? Because what you've given is what I would say is just this broad idea that it's, you know, it's since October 22nd, 1844 and and before the Sunday law and actually technically even before uh, the sixth plague. Right. Right. But, so you so you've narrowed it down into that very broad swath of time. But now we have to pinpoint it. To, to, he says that and one is. How can we mark that is as being specifically Biden? I can say, well, it's before the Sunday law. And and because there's 10 kings that have not received power. So it's it's in the time of the UN. But but that could put us lots of places before the Sunday law. Um, So we have to take all of the information here. And. Because we can't say that this is from John's time if the seven kings are presidents of the United States, right? And we definitely can't say it's just from anywhere in, in the days of one king, in the time of the United States. It has to be at the time just before the Sunday law, right? Before the ten kings receive power one hour with the beast. So John is, is being brought to, I believe to our time right now. But the question is, how, how can that be, right? How can this explanation only make sense to us right now? That we can say, well, all things were written, you know, for us upon whom the end of the world has come. But there's going to be a time we can read Revelation 17, and we're going to be in the time of the Ten Kings, right? We're, we're not going to be in the time where it is is. So... It seems kind of odd, but maybe this is God's providence, that the time when is 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 when this is understood. Right. So we are now for the first time in this movement, understanding that the seven kings here are specifically referring to the presidents of the United States and we're unraveling the riddle at the time when it is, when it is marking. But this couldn't have been unraveled during the time of Trump or any time subsequent to that. Now that's that's pretty, um, for lack of a better word, narcissistic. To say, here we are figuring out this riddle for the first time, because we've just figured it out over the last couple of weeks. And we're saying the way that we can place that is that the riddle is understood 
at the time when the one is. All right. That's the only way I can say when we know is is. That is is now. Right? So before the five are fallen, no one can understand this riddle. Right? Okay. So we we have to understand this explanation only now. And, and that's what we've done. So to, to do that is very focused upon, well, here we are, and we're now saying, well, the one is, we're in that time, and we're unraveling this riddle for the first time. But that that is very, you know, sort of self-focused. It's, um, you know, it, it, is that all we can do? But I don't see any other way to explain this to know when the one is. And you can see with the riddle and, and how God works that it, it makes sense that something, when it is understood, when we pass over the ground of fulfilled prophecy, light is going to reflect back on past events. Those present events are going to reflect back upon the past and they'll be understood. And then light is going to shine forward from those past events for our feet. It's going to shine ahead on the path. But this is the only way that this makes sense to me from what we've studied. And then we then we can say, you know, the beast that was not even he is the eighth. So it's going to it's going to say we have this this seven kings five are fallen. We can now say, you know, those are just starting with. Bush senior, Bush the first, Trump is the fifth, he's fallen. One is, that's Biden, right? There's another that's not yet come. And when he comes, it's a short space. So that's going to be that period of time in which, now you can see how different this interpretation is from anything this movement has done. To take the seven kings and just directly say, these are the seven presidents from 1989, from the time of the end. And it couldn't be understood, you know, prior, right? So we're saying that, you know, this, this whole riddle was given for us right now. That's why I say it's kind of narcissistic. I mean, who are we uh, then to claim that we're now understanding this riddle and this was really written for whoever understood this riddle? For them to do it in the present tense, the one that is during that time. But we can see then, yeah, there still is another king, right? And then there's the eight, the one that we've been looking for. And he's the papacy. He's the beast of Revelation 13. And, and the ten horns, these are ten kings. Now, these ten horns that are ten kings... Um, these are not referring to the ten horns on the beast of Revelation 13. These are referring to the ten horns on the scarlet colored beast. Because they're the ten kings or the ten horns at the end of the world. And they've received no kingdom as yet, right? So even though we have this beast, which is the world, it has, it has these, the United Nations represented there in the horns. But they receive no power, but they receive power as kings one hour with the beast of Revelation 13. These have one mind and shall give power and strength unto the beast. They shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he's Lord of lords and kings and kings, right? The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, right? Now, we have the waters, but she's also sitting upon the seven heads, which we know then are the hills of Rome. And then we know that these 10 horns, the kingdoms of the world, will, will turn against the beast. He shall hate the whore, shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So this is the drying up of the water of the river Euphrates. This is going to be the end of that beast. So, so, and we're going to see this in chapter 18, right? 
For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree. So this is the UN, right? And give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. So the UN is going to give their kingdom unto the papacy. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which, with which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So then this makes sense uh, here with this, this fall of Babylon. You know, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. This is now Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen. Right? It's become the habitation of devils. Now we know the city of Babylon has three parts at the end. The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Because they're all united. Right? But that woman herself is mystery Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots. Right? And so it's going to describe this destruction and, and how they all mourn uh, the loss of this, this, this great world system, religious system as well. So they're all connected. So, so to me, this makes sense. Revelation 17 now makes sense to me for the first time in my life. Um, and it explains Revelation 13. And it explains Millerite history, it explains everything for me. But I don't know about for you who are viewing this, whether you're live here or whether, you know, you're watching online. You know, am I just reading into things, things that are not there? Right? Because we understand the subjectivity of human nature. I could be wrong. I could be seeing things uh, incorrectly, right? So I know that. But that's why we've been so careful in how we've approached all of this information. So we brought so many different lines together. And we can see, you know, it starts with the seven, the last seven kings of Judah, which we still haven't put on this line. But if, if we're going to put them here, we might as well do that. Um, I'll just copy this. Okay, so we just put these under here. So now we're going to have um, Manasseh. So we're not going to have Manasseh here. We're going to have Manasseh here. So we just get rid of this. Vanessa. Uh, what's his name? Um, Ammon. Josiah. Oops. Um, Jehoiakim. No, we got, no, before we have Jehoahaz, pardon me. And then we have Jehoiakim. And Jehoiachin. Zedekiah. And you can see then how these are lining up with what ends up happening in our history. And then you have Christ. Now, um, now we know here from Zedekiah to Christ that there's this overturn, 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 right? So you're going to have Nebuchadnezzar Babylon is the kingdom then. It's so overturned to Media Persia, overturned to Greece, overturned to Rome, and he shall come whose right it is. Now, we can sort of see here that that is, um, is sort of depicted here, right, at this time. So, uh, 
So with this civil war president, we're going to see the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. The beast, of course, is going to parallel. In its resurrection, it's going to parallel Christ. So, so we have this seventh president. Doesn't mean that there isn't going to be different various governments of the United States of the false prophet. However, it's going to manifest itself. So it sort of leaves room open for events that are going to follow until ultimately uh, the papacy sits upon the thrones of the throne of the earth with the support of the United Nations and the United States. But so this this still sort of begs another question. If this is the case, right, that the is is now. Um, why would why would God write the book of Revelation and this riddle in such a way that its primary application is to this time that we are in, not to some future time and not to some previous time? Why would the is need to be understood now? Why would God place the is his is here? Right? Because he could have placed the is in 1989. He's going to say there are seven kings. You know, the first, you know, we're in this time of this king and there's going to be six more. Right. Or even when we look at Daniel chapter uh, 11. Right. And it's going to it's going to be in the time of Cyrus. Right. So we say, well, why wouldn't we be in the si time of Cyrus? You know, uh, three shall stand yet, yet stand up in Persia. And the fourth shall be far richer than them all. And he shall stir up all against the realm of Grecia. You know, so you can see that the Daniel in his vision in Daniel chapter 10, he's going to be counting kings from the time in which he is having this vision, right? He's not going to be counting it from some future time. So the question is, why is John then counting these kings? From our time, like from our day, back in a sense, right? Five of them have already fallen. You, you understand the problem. So that's the question that needs to be examined, right? So, so we can't prove things by themselves. We have to have some way in which we can answer that objection. So how do we do that? Well, I'm thinking of the manna given day by day as the people needed it. And I was also getting John 16 quite strongly, especially from 8 on down. How, uh, verse 13 says, Albeit when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. And 16 says, a little while and ye shall not see me, was not. And again, a little while and ye shall see me, you know, is to come because I go to the Father. And 21, a woman when she is in travail hath sorrow. Well, aren't we women in travail having sorrow, like labor, trying to figure out what is God showing us? Like, how is he fitting us for this time? Because her hour has come, but as soon as she is delivered of the child, when the revelation comes and it's clear to us, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. We're not only waiting for the return of Christ, we're waiting for more of Christ as revealed in prophecy that we are trying to, as you say, unravel right now. So. Okay. All I can say is be in good cheer. You're like God is leading us. And sure, we may stumble and a few things might be wrong, but he's going to refine it. He will definitely bring truth to bear so that we can understand it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. So, I mean, it's true that we're, we're in that sort of situation, but that's that's been true um, in other times that people are like a woman in travail. I mean, and if we're going to, apply a woman in travail that's the time of jacob's trouble so so we have these different sevens you know like you have the seven last plagues right you have the seven kings you have and at different times 
you know, we're looking at it from a certain perspective, right? When, when um, you know, the seven trumpets occur in the book of Revelation. I mean, God's people are at a certain point in which, you know, the seventh trumpet begins to sound, right? So, so we're in this line of prophecy. But when you get to a place in a prophecy and it says, you are here, right? You know, that's, it's like you go to a sign and, you know, it's a map of a mall or something and it says you are here, you know, how do they know, right? So you are here and we're saying, well, right now, the you are here that's in this riddle was not true until we came to that place, we came to where that map is located. And only then could we say, in reality, um, um, five are fallen, one is. Right? You couldn't say that 20 years ago and, and it be present, presently tensed true, right? It couldn't be true in the present tense, but we can now do that. That's what we are saying. Five are fallen and one is. And, and the question still needs to be answered. How can we prove that we are in the time when the one is? That, that we just happen to be here now, looking at this sign saying that you are here? You understand the problem. Well, so confirm his word with signs following. That's all I can say. Like I don't even know how he's going to do it exactly, but I know he's going to do it. Yeah. Now, now we know it's in the time when the beast is not, right? So it's true that the beast is still not when this one is, right? So and and we can place these seven presidents. The, the point is that we we have to place these seven kings as the seven presidents at the time of the end, based upon the model that we have of the first seven kings of Persia and the last seven kings of Judah. So then this, this the kings that thou sawest that received no kingdom of yet must still be, this is still in the context of this riddle. So we know whenever this, this riddle, the time is that this is understood. It has to be understood in the time of the seven kings, obviously, because five are fallen, one is, and one is not yet come. It has to be in the time when the beast that was and is not. And it has to be in the time in which the ten kings, which are on the scarlet colored beast, have received no kingdom as yet. So, so it's before the Sunday law. Um, so, so, so we can put it sort of in that broad sense. We can say, well, obviously we're in the time of the seven kings. And we're before the time of the ten kings receiving power. But now we're going to say, well, there is one. So the question is, why? And, and, and I'm not answering this question well. But the question is, why is it given from this perspective five are fallen? Now, we could say that the reason why it's given from that perspective has to do with the heads of Revelation 13. So in Revelation 13, we know that it's true, five are fallen, one is. The one that is, is the United States. And there is going to be a seventh head. That's the UN, right? So in those last three heads, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh, is the beast, the false prophet, and the dragon, right? So we know that's true. And it it could be that when it talks about these seven kings, it's not talking about the seven heads of the beast of Revelation 13, but it's paralleling those. That is, it's giving us, from that perspective, the reason why it's going to be understood after five are fallen, after five of the presidents are gone. 
Now, the question is then, why would this riddle then need to be understood now, not earlier, and not later? Would it be too late if this riddle was written, six are fallen, one is? Or seven have fallen, and the eighth is, right? Now, you see, of course, you couldn't say the eighth is because the eighth is not yet, right? So you obviously couldn't put it in that time. Um, but why is it not written in, you know, three are fallen, one is? And you understand what I'm saying? Because we have these seven kings. We can place them here at the time of the end. But the riddle only becomes true in the time of Biden. So why? It, we, we've sort of answered it, but we need to have, we need to nail this down more specifically. Because we weren't ready for it. Okay, so we weren't ready for it. So that means we had to go through an experience first, mm -hmm. right? So one of the things is it's going to have to happen after July 18th, correct? Mm -hmm. why, why do I say that? Because that's the foundation that is established on, in a sense. Okay. So, so we say it happens after July 18th. So it has to happen somewhere after July 18th. And, it, and it's going to, right? So we know that 186 days after July 18th, we can say one, five are fallen, one is. Now, we could say that technically after January 6th. So let's, let's go here and address this point. So this is addressing Colin's study uh, that we referred to uh, yesterday. So just in, you know, really briefly, Colin had created this chart, and this chart addresses the 1,533 days in Millerite history for August 11th, 1840. There's going to be 1,533 days to October 22, 1844, 1,347 days to April 19th, and 186 days further than to October 22nd. So he then takes the election of Trump. So that's when Trump is de declared president. November 9th, 2016, and he counts 1,533 days to the inauguration of uh, Joe Biden. So we've already established this before. And now we haven't explicitly looked at this 186 days from July 18, 2020 to January 20th, but it's there. We, we addressed 187 days from July 18 to January 21st, 2021. What happens January 1st, January 21st, 2021? Biden takes office. Yeah. So, you, yeah, you're going to have January 21st, 2021. No, it's not Biden taking office because he does this at January 20th. That's the inauguration. January 21st, the School of the Prophets is sold. Right. All right, I stand corrected, yes. Yeah, okay. So we have 187 days to January 21st. Now, of course, to January 20th is an inclusive count of 187 days or a cardinal count of 186, right? An ordinal count, I guess, um, it, it, inclusive, you would call it 187 days, right? Which is also the ordinal count, right? So... It's at 186 cardinal days. So you got the ordinal, cardinal, and inclusive in, in this case. So um, so anyway, we have these um, these periods of time that we've noticed, right? So we noticed, at least I did. I mean, I noticed that if January 21st, 2021 was 187 days from July 18th, that we had the 186 to six days to January 20th, but we didn't put it in this structure like this that Colin has. So we know that this is correct. 
right? This is this is in God's providence. Now, we do have, and I'm going to have to find it here. Um, so, we've got a lot of charts that I have to search through, but I, sh I should have noted which page it was on. Um, but I'm just going to go, oops. I think actually I started setting it up. Never mind. Okay. So we'll go right here. Okay. So I have this um, chart that I started this morning. And here I have the 1,533 days. And then we have July 18th here. And then I marked 186, 187 to January 20th, 21st. So I'm just a bit lazy there instead of marking each of them, just also space-wise. So... You know, so I could have put January 21st at the bottom, 187 at the bottom, 186 at the top. You know, I could have lined it up that way, but I just did it this way. It's lazy. But we also have 1,533 days that have been marked before. And that's from uh, January 14th, 2017. So this is this is um, a Glen Park Hall. So I'm just going to write that in here. It's this way. And park and oops, park and that's going to be Paneum. Right, so Jeff is going to uh, do his presentation where he marks Paneum, and that's going to be 1,533 days to March 27th, 2021. So that's that's going to be connected to the Levitical chiasm, to all these other structures, right? Now, um, then we have, uh, so I'm going to just put this other stuff in here that we also have to take note of. So when we're looking at information, we can't just pick some of it. We have to look at all of it. So we know that we're going to have July 4th, uh, 2020. Now, what's July 4th, 2020? Oops. Put it like this. Wasn't that the end of the uh, 100 days of prayer? Right. So it's an end of 100 days of prayer. And and that's extremely significant because that's going to begin on March 27th, 2021, right? Or not, to, no, uh, pardon me. Yeah, 2020, right? So you're going to have March uh, 27th, 2020, and you're going to have this 100 days of prayer. And that's going to be uh, inclusive, right? So that means that you're expressing uh, a count of 99 days as, and it's not 100 years, 100 days, right? And we know that's 144,000 minutes. Okay, so you have this 100 days of prayer that's going to be there. And um, we know that we can then mark um, another event. So this one, I'm going to have to do this way, which is why I didn't want to do this other way. And we're also going to have January 6th here. So, so January 6th, um, 2021. So January 6th, 2021, the significance of that. You should know that's going to be the siege of Washington. Okay. And that this is going to be a period of all this. We're also going to have another period of 186 days. And that's going to go from here to here. OK. So this period of 186 days. Um, 
We remember January 6th is what date on the biblical calendar? Does anybody remember? In 2021. It's the 22nd day of the 10th month on the biblical calendar. Sorry, I'll just put here. Right, which symbolizes October 22. Now, in, in Colin's line, he's going to mark July 18th as the first day of the first month and January 20th as the 10th day of the seventh month. That is, he's going to mark this as April 19th and October 22. But you can see this is also marked as October 22, right? Just being the 22nd day of the 10th month with the 186 days. Um, And I'm trying to remember if it's uh, um, actually 186 or 187. I think it's... Okay. Hang on, just gotta make sure I do this right. Yeah, so it's actually 186 days, so that was correct. I'm just making sure. <clears throat> so we have that 186 days. So you can see we have the same thing. So July 4th, is it a symbol of the first day of the first month for America? It's a symbol of the start of the United States, right? So can we see that it, it, yeah. And if we're going to parallel the United States with, you know, Israel, no, it's going to be when they first begin to count the months as the first month, you know, Moses is going to say this month is the beginning of months, right? So you're going to be counting now, you know, this period for all these feasts, they're going to be counted from the first month. Right. So you get the first day of the first month. So we can see how July 4th is the first day of the first month. Now, if July 4th is the first day of the first month, July 18th is what? Is it, it's Passover, right? You know, now we can say it's 14 days, so you can, you know, you can sort of say it's it's the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, however you want to look at it, right? Um, now, so you're going to have this same parallel there, too, right? You're going to have January 6th being the Day of Atonement, right, now, right, October 22, and then you're going to have 14 days. Uh, leading you from the Day of Atonement. And that's going to lead you to where? It's going to lead you to the end of the Feast of Tabernacles, right? If we figure this all out, right? So it's going to be after the Feast of Tabernacles ends. It's 14 days. Now, we also know that this January 6th marks the beginning of 10 days of prayer that are going to end on January. So January 6th to January 16th. So that's just a cardinal count they do. So as you start to look at these, these all of the information, you start to get a bigger picture of what is happening here. Right? It, it's not as simple as just saying, well, there's 186 days from July 18th to January 20th, and there's 1,533 days from November 9th, 2016, and that we can then just say, July 18th is parallel to April 19th, and a January 20th is parallel to um, October 22, right? Because we already have that symbol with January 6th being the 22nd day of the 10th month on the biblical calendar. And we already have July 1st and the 186 days to that, right? So... So Iran points out January 6th is 1,013 days from today. 
1533 days. Uh, I have to read the rest of the thing here. Um, before January 6th is uh, 1013 Julian. Okay, so 1013, um, so, so it's going to give you that October 13th symbol. Now, now this is, of course, important. And this, this could start getting really complex, but we know that we have the October 13th, 2018 date in here as well, right? That is, we can take this chart and we can mark some other dates in here. We're going to have no, October 13th, I'm not going to write them in, but October 13th, 2018 is going to be where we're going to count the 391 days. So we could put that whole chart dealing with um, October 13th, and we could put even the June 9th date in there, um, uh, 2018, the 126 days to October 13th, 2018, um, and then you could put the 300 and uh, 29 days uh, to September 7th. And the center of that is March 27th, 2019. And uh, and then you're going to have, of course, the 63 days to uh, November 9th, 2019. So, so you're going to have all of these structures intertwined with each other, right? So I'm not going to put them all in here. But we can see here that that it's not as simple as that. It is not as simple as just taking one of these pieces of information, one of the periods of 1,533 days, and one of the periods of 186 days, and, and just leaving it at that as a line, right? That this, this line is a progression of wheels within wheels. And so we have to consider all of those cogs right? All of those gears and, and, and figure out what they mean. Now, that's what we did with um, judges. So when we were doing the book of judges, we weren't merely, um, you know, just looking at judges and, and trying to line up events. We were actually understanding that these were a part of a structure line upon line with all of these different way marks and that these all interlocked with each other. And they were talking about our movement at the present time. Now, we weren't taking that as the primary interpretation of judges. We we're taking that as, a, you know, a secondary interpretation, just an interpretation that we could see that that history applied to us. And, and, and we know that this, that we're right now in a repeat of history, right? So, so we can interpret all of this based upon its parallels to Millerite history, but we know that that 1,533 days can't just be marked from, you know, uh, November 9th, 2016 to January 20th, 2021. That it also has this other markings. And there's actually other periods of 1,533 weeks, uh, which is, uh, or th yeah, um, done as well. Um and then 1,533 days is 219 weeks. There's periods of 219 days. All of this connected to this prediction regarding Trump and Biden, right? So all of these things become interlocked with each other. We can't just take, take part of it out and examine it. Okay. Now, um, so one of the things that's happening, though, so when we've looked at these other lines of history, we have a repeat of history. Our movement is a repeat of history. But when we're dealing with Revelation 17, um, you know, we're taking the primary interpretation of these seven kings as being these last seven presidents of the United States, if we want to put it that way. Right now, Trump is the last Republican president um, before, you know, the, the globalists take over the United States. So he's technically the last president of the United States in that sense. That is, as re Republican in the truest sense. 
And he's actually going to represent us, despite the fact his, he's he's a narcissist jerk and, um, um, you know, isn't really a great person per se. As far as embodying that part of the United States, the idea of the Constitution and free enterprise and the rights of the individual, Trump actually always has stood for those. Those are basically uh, the foundation of his whole understanding you know he's a uh, you know he's a believer in positive the power of positive thinking uh, norman vincent peel was his pastor right so he and so he's 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 this uh, sort of maybe almost you might call this secular protestant uh that that you have that that actually created the constitution the idea of the constitution wasn't to be a religious constitution promoting a particular religion. It was to give um, this freedom so that the United States could have religious freedom for people to believe what they wanted, um, but also the freedom to act within a society, to earn money, um, et cetera, right? So that constitution actually set up whether they understood the economics of it or not, but giving all of that freedom uh, they created an environment where the United States could prosper, which it did, right? Um, so Trump embodies all of that. And he's going to stir up all against the realm of Grisha. He's Xerxes. But he's going to lose to the globalists. Now, if Trump comes back into power again, he gets elected. Well, that's kind of meaningless if it's going to be a civil war, right? It's just that um, the next president is the Civil War president. So whether it's Trump or anybody else, according to these lines that we look at, that's what's happening. Um, so, so here we are interpreting Revelation 17 in this direct way, right? That is... It's not when we when we deal with Revelation 17, we're not we're not really dealing with a repeat of history of Millerite history of our lines to get those seven kings. We're just saying those are the last seven kings. We can then, because of Millerite history, place the start of those seven kings, right? So obviously we have to come to an understanding of the repeat of history to interpret Revelation 17, verse 10, to know when is is. Right. But we're saying that this is the direct interpretation of this prophecy. There were seven kings that began pagan Rome. There's seven kings that end modern Rome. There were seven kings that ended Judah. Right. Now, we, we can say, of course, when we looked at those seven kings, there's connections to Millerite history. But this is not primarily referencing Millerite history for these seven kings. You understand what I'm saying? Right? We don't need to figure out the time of the end here to figure out these seven kings. We just need to know that there are seven kings, and it's in the time of the United States. It's just before the Sunday law. And it's, it's going to be true that five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come prior to the Sunday law when this riddle is unraveled. And that's pointing to us now, understanding this riddle. Right? Are we comfortable with this? Now, I know Stephen came in late, so he didn't see a lot of what we were presenting. But, but what we're saying, Stephen, is that, um, that this riddle is only understood at the time of Biden, when we have the one that is. And that it's it's rather narcissistic of us to say, here we have now understood this in the time of Biden that the one is. That that, that is the key to the riddle, is understanding when is is. And it's only understood now in our history. So, so I don't know if you have any thoughts on this. Well, we had said that the one is, is Trump. We had, but when we 
spent all of our time looking at uh, at uh, at numbering these presidents. We agree that Reagan is the one who's going to make the league, right? Yes. But, but we don't line him up with Cyrus. That is, he lines up with Darius the Mede as far as the time of the end is concerned. So Bush the first is going to be the one who's the president that lines up with Cyrus. Now we've we've lined them up this way. Now Jeff did make a reference where he lined up Reagan and Cyrus. But we can see that that doesn't really make sense in the context of numbering these kings. Right? There's obviously symbol symbolism between Reagan and Cyrus, as well as many people have made uh, uh, parallels to Cyrus and Trump. But we could say that Bush the first must line up with Cyrus. So if we're going to count these, and we're going to say that the one that is, is Biden, we have to figure out how can we do that? How can we make, make it that the one that is, is not Trump? Now, part of it is we parallel this with, of course, you know, why is it that the five are fallen, one is? Well, we know it's true of the papal beast, the five of the heads are fallen, one is, and one has not yet come. So there is this type of parallel. But the question is, why are we given the one is, if we're going to apply them to the presidents of the United States, not in the time of Obama? They're not going to say in the time of the Bo Obama, three are fallen, one is, and there's going to be three that are going to stand up, and then the fourth is going to be the eighth, or whatever. You know, It's just given, the riddle is given in this way to be understood at this time in the present tense now, not in the time of John, not in 1798. And we know it's it's in the time when the beast is not, so that's from 1798 to the Sunday law. But we know it's in the time of these seven kings. And so if these seven kings are seven presidents, how do we say when is is, right? That's, that's what we've been studying this morning before you got here. Um, then we went over to, you know, call and study. But um, so we mostly studied this. And, and that's going to be the, the thing that we have to establish. Is this correct? Right. So we don't know that it's correct, that we could be doing something wrong. But we say that the seventh is going to be a civil war president. And it doesn't matter really who it is from our perspective right now, whether we think it's going to be Trump or someone else. If Trump wins, it's civil war. If Trump loses, it's civil war. And and that's going to be paralleled with uh, what happens in the time of Zedekiah. And specifically even after, you know, I mean, there is this division happening at the time when Jerusalem is falling. Um. And then we can say, you know, the overturn, overturn, overturn goes to Christ. Well, the beast is the one that's resurrected. And um, it, it's going to be the eighth. And it comes from the seven. That is, it's not one of the seven. Because the beast is the papacy. And if these are presidents of the United States, you can't say the beast is one of the presidents of the United States. Because the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, Right. So it just means he follows the seven. But there is an, um, uh, you know, this this connection to the five and the six. So we could say that there's just this parallel with the heads of the beast of Revelation 13 that parallels this. Just like there's the beast that is not, Biden is going to parallel this. But this is the United States. And then we also have the Ten Horns. The Ten Horns have not received power as of yet in the time in which the one is, but they shall receive power one hour with the beast. So that's going to be when the beast is resurrected, the eighth head, so to speak, right? If you want mm -hmm. to look at the heads of the beast of Revelation 13. Um, but he's also the eighth in the sense that he follows the seven kings, right? So, so this is a different interpretation than we've had before. And if you, you haven't seen all of the videos, you need to go back and watch them again. 
But this is this is a unique interpretation. Did, we didn't know we would get here. But we're just saying that the riddle is understood only when it is true that five are fallen and one is. And these are presidents of the United States. So that's, I don't know if you have any more comments on it, Stephen. Yeah, so I have to consider. Because yeah, it is kind of bizarre, isn't it? In what way? Well, it's different than what we've done before. Like, you know, to me to sort of say, well, the riddle is only understood at the time when five are fallen, one is. Because that's kind of narcissistic of us, right? Here we are, the ones understanding this riddle, because we now recognize when is is. And as far as I know, um, you know, sure, Colin has applied this to the presidents of the United States, but he's done that as an application, not as a direct prophecy. Well, we're saying that when it says there are seven kings, it's not interpreting, reinterpreting history and just applying the heads to the kings. It's saying that this is seven kings. That's the United States during the time when the beast is not, we have these seven kings. It's at the end of the United States. That's, this is, of course, the false prophet. So the false prophet has seven kings, the last seven kings of the U.S. Those are those kings that are being referred to. And, and the seven hills, the seven mountains, right? The seven heads of seven mountains, that's just referring to the city of Rome. The heads are not the kings, right? And then we can see how these parallel the last seven kings of Judah. And you can see that progression um, in the time of Zedekiah. That's when the kingdom is going to be taken captive by Babylon. Well, it's actually under Babylon from Jehoiakim through to Zedekiah. But then it's going to be overturned, overturned, overturned until he who, com he who comes whose right it is, and the beast of Revelation 13, the woman, she is counterfeiting Christ's resurrection, right? That's why she's the eighth. So, so in doing this study, from my perspective, from how I've looked at all the information, I've resolved for me personally all of the conflicts that I had with Revelation 17. Now, maybe there's contradictions or conflicts that I haven't noticed, that I've created, that we've created, but I would say it's mostly me thinking out loud, and you guys are giving some input. But but we came to this conclusion based on looking at everything. Right? We didn't leave any stone unturned. And we can then say, when we look at Daniel chapter 11, verse 2, that, that that makes sense. Now, the other thing about it, too, is that we also have the, the fact of the globalists, and we know that Trump loses to the globalists. So that would be another thing that, because um, we know that Trump is Xerxes, so we, we know that from other ways. So, it, But it has to be true after the fall of Trump that we can say one is. We can't say that during the time of Trump. You understand what I just said? Well, to... when Colin, yeah, when Colin did his study on the 25th December 2021, mm -hmm. he was kind of backdating it. To me, that did seem like an issue. Because Biden was the one that is really when that was kind of brought to the understanding that the application of the riddle to the presidents. Right. Right. But but we have to have a an overthrow, right? Xerxes loses to Greece. So so you have to have the five are fallen. 
Now, the one is in, in that story is going to be Greece, right? And that's why the next kingdom shown is going to be Alexander's kingdom. We're not going to have Artaburn, Artabanus or Artaxerxes in Daniel chapter 11, right? Mm -hmm. so, so this helps us also place that five are fallen. It has to be Cyrus, Cambyses, False Myrtus, Darius, and Xerxes. The one that is has to be represented by Greece. Now, here, Biden is the president, right? He's not Greece. He's still a president of the United States. But the United States has been conquered by Greece when Trump loses on January 6, 2021, when that civil war or that siege occurs, right? So, so that's why we have to say the one that is is Biden. Right. So that's another reason why we could place Biden there as the one that is. So the five that are fallen are Trump. One is. So the one that's still to come can't be the eighth because the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and comes from the seven. He's the, that is, the seven being the beast of Revelation 13, the second one, is going to create an image to the beast and cause all the world to worship the beast in his image. Right. So that's why the beast is the eighth, and it's of the seven. Without the seven, there is no image to the beast for the beast to be resurrected. Because, right, remember, it makes an image to the beast. And, and what is that image to the beast? What does it cause it to do? Well, it, uh makes the whole world take the mark yeah well it's it says um, um, it should both that the image of the beast should both speak right and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast that should be killed we also know it receives a wound by a sword and did live right so so the United States, creates the image to the beast. And in creating an Im image to the beast, it allows the beast to live, right? Because it had this mortal wound and it's also going to speak. But right? now the image of the beast speaks, but remember the image of the beast is, is this mixture of church and state through the United States, but it's still giving this, uh, beast which had a wound so that it can live right so that makes the most sense to have the eighth to be a president is is not consistent okay so that's that's all we're saying here because the beast that was not even he is the eighth and is of the seven and when you look at the greek here and you look at what that means it doesn't mean he's one of the seven right um, whatever that was. Yeah, the beast that was is not even he is. So I'm just going to go to. Yeah, so you're going to have this word. Um, his origin. He comes out of, um, and also this, uh, so he is of the seven and goeth unto perdition. So he's not one of the seven, because it doesn't say that. Okay. So anyway, we're done for today. Um, not sure what we're going to do tomorrow, how we're going to continue this study, where, where we're going to go with this. But um, people need to think about it. They need to pray about it. They need to study it. They need to comment on the video. If they have objections, if they have things that we missed, we need to know about them so that we can be corrected. 
So let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today and for each person who is searching these things out. We pray for one another. We ask for your angels' care and protection. And um, help us, Lord, to recognize our sin, things that need to change in our lives, and to trust in you for righteousness. Be with us throughout this day. Bring us together again to study your word according to thy will is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.